Based on the second law of thermodynamics, we know that whenever any reaction takes place in nature, whenever any physical or biological process takes place in nature, the entropy of the universe, the change in entropy of the universe must be a positive value. So the entropy of the universe must always increase. And that's equivalent to saying the total amount of energy in the universe after the reaction must be more spread out than before that reaction actually took place. Now we can also describe the second law of thermodynamics by using a mathematical equation. So we can say that the change in entropy of the system plus the change in entropy of the surroundings is equal to the change in entropy of the universe and that must always be greater than zero. It must always increase. It must always be a positive value. So we can still have a decrease in the entropy of the system so this can still be a negative value as long as the increase in the entropy of the surroundings is greater than the decrease in the entropy of the system. So as long as this quantity is greater than this quantity, this will always be a positive value. This will always be greater than zero. Now, what we want to attempt to do in this lecture is to derive an equation by beginning with this equation and by using the definition of entropy, we want to derive an equation known as the Gibbs free energy. And this equation basically gives us the conditions under which a reaction is spontaneous and under which the reaction is not spontaneous. So let's call this equation number one and let's recall what the definition of entropy is for constant temperature. Now, the reason we're going to assume constant temperature is because all the different types of biological reactions that take place in nature usually take place under constant temperature conditions. So for example, reactions that take place inside our body and inside the cells of our body take place at a constant temperature of about 36.8 degrees Celsius. So let's suppose we're inside our cell and inside that cell some type of intracellular process takes place. So our cell and the process is the system and everything outside the cell are the surroundings. So when that process actually takes place a certain amount of energy is exchanged between that system and the surroundings. So let's suppose that the energy left our cell and entered our surroundings. What exactly does that mean about the entropy of the surroundings? Well, because the energy left the system and it dispersed throughout the surroundings, that means the entropy of the surroundings increased in this particular case. And in this case, we can define what the entropy is in terms of the amount of energy that left the system and the temperature of that particular system. So the way that we define entropy in physics is the change in entropy of the surroundings which is a positive value as long as entropy left our system is equal to the quantity of enthalpy, the quantity of energy that left the system as a result of heat divided by the temperature given to us in kelvins. Now the negative sign simply means when the enthalpy, when the heat basically flows out of the cell, when the energy is absorbed by the surroundings, this system loses energy, but the surroundings gains that energy. And so our delta S of the surroundings will be a positive value. That's why we have this negative value here. So by using this definition of entropy and by using the second law of thermodynamics, we can basically derive the equation for Gibbs free energy that we can use to basically determine whether or not a reaction is spontaneous. So let's call this equation one and this equation two. We can now take equation two and substitute this quantity into this quantity. So the delta S of the surroundings is equal to negative of the delta uh, H system divided by the temperature. So we replace this quantity with the right side of this equation and we get equation three. So the change in entropy of our system is a minus 
the change in uh, enthalpy of the system divided by the temperature, which is the same thing as the change in entropy of our surroundings, is equal to the change in entropy of our universe. Let's call this equation 3. Now, if we take equation 3 and multiply each term by negative t, we get this equation here. So this becomes negative t delta s system, this becomes positive delta h system, the t's cancel, and negative times a negative gives us a positive. And this quantity becomes negative t multiplied by delta s universe. So we can rearrange this equation, basically bring this to that side, and we get the following equation. Let's call this equation 4. So uh, the negative of the temperature in kelvins multiplied by the change in entropy of the universe is equal to the change in enthalpy of the system. So basically how much energy was exchanged between the system and the surroundings minus the temperature multiplied by the delta s of the system. So let's call this equation 4. Now if we take this and we basically represent this term as delta G, then this is the more common equation that you're used to seeing. So this quantity is actually Gibbs free energy. So the negative T multiplied by delta S of the universe is called Gibbs free energy. It has the units of joules and it is represented by delta G. So in equation four, if we rewrite this term with delta G, we basically get equation five. And this is the equation that gives us the Gibbs Gibbs free energy when a process takes place. Now if we look at equation 3 and we look at equation 1, so we know from the second law of thermodynamics that in any real biological process the change in entropy of the universe must always be a positive value. So after the reaction takes place, the energy must be more dispersed and more spread out than before that reaction actually took place. And what that means is, for this to actually be true, the uh, right side of the equation, the delta S of the universe, must always be a positive value, right? So this is the same thing as saying this. Now, this quantity, the right side of the equation, is going to be a positive value only if this quantity here, the delta S of the system, is greater than this quantity here. If this is greater than this, then when we take the difference of these two values, this will be a positive value. So we see that according to the second law of thermodynamics, in any real biological process, the entropy of the universe must always increase as per this equation. Therefore, from equation three, we see that if this delta S universe is to be positive, then what that means is this quantity, so the delta S of the system, must be greater than this quantity, this term here, because if this is a greater number than this, then the difference will be a positive value. So let's call this inequality, inequality 6. Now, if we take inequality 6, and we multiply both sides by t, so we simply bring t to the left side, then we get the following equation. What this equation tells us is, for our process to actually increase the entropy of the universe, this inequality must be true. So t multiplied by delta s of the system should be greater than the delta h of the system. Now, let's take a look at Gibbs free energy equation 5. So on the right side of this equation, this term is the same as this term here. And this term is the same as this term here. So according to equation 5 and according to this inequality, this quantity must be less than this quantity. And if this quantity is greater than this quantity, if we take their difference, we get a negative value. So what that means is, 
a biological reaction that takes place inside our body or inside our cells increases the entropy of the universe only if the Gibbs free energy is actually a negative value. And that means when the Gibbs free energy is a negative value, our reaction in, under that particular condition at that particular temperature is a spontaneous reaction. So spontaneous reaction that increases entropy of the universe under this particular temperature will always have a Gibbs free energy that is a negative value. And that's what we mean by a spontaneous reaction. So a reaction is only spontaneous at that particular temperature if the Gibbs free energy is negative. If the Gibbs free energy is positive at that particular temperature, then that reaction will not be spontaneous. It will not take place naturally or spontaneously in nature.